Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Fix It Gym. Today, we're doing a little retro gaming repairs, hopefully. Um, this is a Game Boy. Uh, is this called the Pocket? I don't know. I never actually had played many Game Boys. The screens were just so small, I would get some serious eye strain. Uh, I got this from my cousin who was an avid Game Boy player and he asked me to take a look at it because it quit working um, obviously I said yes because you know while I haven't really taken any of these apart before I'm always curious to take a stab at it because yeah, otherwise just been sitting around collecting dust and doing nothing um, Game Boys do have special screws. They're tri-wing screws so it kind of looks like a Phillips with just three spaces though so you can kind of see them. Um, first let's put some batteries in it and see what it does. The battery terminals themselves actually look very clean so that's always nice. We have some batteries here ice tray. I use this to separate my screws and little pieces so they don't get lost. Batteries are in. Let's see, power light. Don't have a game yet, but it should still do something when we turn it on. If it were working. Nothing. No power light. No noise. So, obviously going to have to take it apart and see what's going on. It's always nice that the covers are still included. Cause some, I don't know how people lose covers on electronic devices so frequently. It's kind of strange, I think. So, let's see what we got here in the little toolkit. I think I have some tri-wings in here. Yep, there's the tri-wings. It comes with a lot of these precision toolkits. I got mine off Amazon. It comes with some of the other bits. I also have a, another kit I got off Amazon. It's the security bit kit. This comes again with some of the more unusual security bits that uh, you get. This one actually has some tri, tri wing screws too. But these are a little heftier, I guess, for comes with this extension. But I got it just because you never know when you're going to need them. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So we'll try this guy here to see if uh, we can get this apart. Like butter. So this we have six screws it looks like, four visible on the outside, two down here at the bottom. I did play the Game Boy, my friend had one when they first came out, I could not afford one, but my buddy, he let me use his and <laughs> my eyes hurt so bad when I would quit. I'd quit playing it for hours. My eyes would just feel tired and crossed. I was pretty excited. They came out with the the newer models that had the XL, so it was like the larger screen. They don't seem to bother me as much, so that's kind of nice. I was also excited when they came out with the. Uh, Game Boy adapters. I got that. I got one when they first came out with the Super Nintendo. I was so excited I could finally play Game Boy games because I had missed so much by that point even. But I was able to play Metroid and the Zeldas and all that stuff. And I was ecstatic. And I still have my Game Boy stuff. Uh, I actually got the 
you know, after the Super Nintendo, the GameCube came, had a uh, Game Boy adapter you could put on the bottom of it, and you could play Game Boy, up to Game Boy Advanced. And again, it's, it's very nice for those of us who can't sit and look at the little screen for hours. Okay, these screws do not want to pop out. They are unscrewed, so let's see here. Comes apart easy. No wires. Of course, now the screws are falling out, so we'll go ahead and put those over here in the container. Looks pretty clean inside. Not seeing any spills yet. Uh, that, that looks like this looks like flux down here, probably when it was in the factory. My cousin doesn't take stuff apart, so I doubt this has ever been taken apart. He probably had it when it was new. So, everything looks good. I really need to get a bench power supply so I can hook stuff up there. Um, let me grab my voltmeter. Okay, so I got my multimeter. This is a new multimeter for me, so I'm probably going to have to poke around a little bit to <laughs> see if things work. Um, it's one of the, you don't tell it how much it actually tells you it's like this what it's self-adjusting or something like that auto sensing so never used one before so it should be interesting um for now let's uh take a look here get this board out because i do want to also clean this up there's something going on here but it looks like it's inside which i'm not sure how that would happen but i don't know i guess we'll find out We will not be using the tri-wing screwdriver for this, so let's grab a small Phillips. I'm not sure what these companies are trying to accomplish by making security screws to keep their stuff together because someone always comes out with a bit for it. Or maybe Nintendo makes the bit and they make money off of it. Uh oh. Power switch. There it is. And that's what we keep that handy for. This one seems a little big. Too small. Hmm, let's see. Or maybe I just wasn't pushing hard enough. Three screws out of the holding the electronics in and I don't see any more the plastic thing okay, that come up easy enough okay, I guess this is where we're connecting the screen Taking these ribbon cables out. If you're not familiar, they have these two tabs here. They kind of push down and it locks it in. So you have to lift those up like so. And then this just, just slide out if both sides lift up. There we go. And there it goes. So we've separated the board actually looks very clean inside which is amazing 
knowing my cousin. So let's set that off to the side and take a look at this. Uh, I still don't see any liquid anywhere. This you sometimes see stuff around soldering points, which is actually a, a flux from when they were putting the board together. Like down here, all this yellow stuff. And I think that's just flux because you can see it around all the bigger soldering joints. It's kind of gross that they don't clean it up, but they do sell a no clean flux that is supposed to not corrode. See the port here looks good. I don't see anything too bad right now, so let's see what's going on here. Um, I'm going to set my meter to continuity, so... No, maybe not. There's continuity, I think. So there we go. I'm not, I don't know a lot about electronics, so I can't get in too in-depth of testing other than what I've seen other people do. But I do know. So if we look here, obviously these are the battery terminals. This is the negative, the positive maybe. Actually, it looks like there's a bit of corrosion down here on this battery terminal. Hmm. Interesting. Let's give it a flip over. So that leads to this one here. But yeah, battery terminal negative, battery terminal positive. So let's just check and make sure that they are, in fact, reaching each other here. So we'll go ahead and put this one here. And it's not a beeping. It's interesting. So that's, <laughs> that could be a pretty easy fix if that's all it is, is a bad connection to the battery. Let's uh, check this. Positive is working fine. Negative, not so much. Oh, nope, working now. Whew. That would have been too easy. <clears throat> so, the question is, why was it not beeping before? When I had it on here, maybe it wasn't touching well. Let's try another spot on the one here. Okay, so that's good. Speaker's a little dirty. Let's clean that up. Always keep a stock of Q-tips. Or cotton buds, apparently, as they say in the UK. Remember, always label your containers. Just a little alcohol, IPA. And just for my own sake, I'm going to try to clean this up a little. I don't get concerned when I drip alcohol because it dries up pretty quick.
Well, I am assuming they were using a no clean flux, but still cleaning it up because, well, never know. I mean, it certainly doesn't look clean. Looks good to me. Alright, so we will take this and put it back here. I'm going to guess that these probably have never seen anything not have continuity here, so let's we'll check it just for goodness. Perfect. Sit that right in there where it belongs. Put these in. There's the power supply. The power supply seems a little loose. Could be part of the problem. Now well, let's see. VCC, I believe that is usually referring to power. Let's check and see if we get power out of there. Hmm. Huh. That's interesting. VSS is power. I don't remember. Let's uh, come back and flip this over again. I'm going to take the batteries out. And before I do that, actually, let's check the voltage. This should be the voltage here for DC which is batteries are DC so let's uh, just touch them and see what we get 3.07 volts which I believe is correct yep. <clears throat> so we are getting voltage to the batteries um, is it correct? Well, easy way to find out is these batteries are 1.5 volts. So that's perfect. 3 volts at 0.7 watts. Um, let's see the amperage. Anything like so the <laughs> regular Nintendo, apparently it could be DC or AC, but I don't see the amps here. So, not too worried about that right now. So let's take this apart. Here, I want to check the switch. Sorry, the table moves so much. It's a small table. I've got to clear off my big table so I can use it. And there won't be as much shaking. On the upside, I think the camera is supposed to have some stability thing built in helps reduce the shaking. So let's this switch seems a little suspect. So we push it over, that should turn it on. There's our buttons. Shouldn't 
should lock in the cartridge too. So let's go back to continuity. Right now it's turned on, so we should have some sort of connection here. Okay, so this I'm assuming is ground. Yep, so on the side is ground. Well, let's zoom in a little so you can see a little better. There we go. So usually when there's a solder on the edges like this, these are ground. And hence they're together. They come back here to the ground of the battery terminal. Okay, none of those are connected to ground. Okay, that one on the very left is connected to positive. So, what's this tell us? Not much, for me anyway. So I'm going to move this over to off position. I'm assuming we shouldn't... Oh, oh. Still getting this to ground, which is good. But I think we should get something when I move it over to here. There should be a connection. So, still think it's the switch. Let's take a look. Mm. So to unsolder it, I will have to remove solder from one, two, three, four, five, six points. It would be nice if I could just take this cover off without doing all that, but I'm not seeing that. Let's zoom you back out. There we go. Okay. This should be fun. We got the soldering iron out. See what kind of damage we can cause. Uh, I never assume I'm going to be able to fix anything. I usually assume the exact opposite because, well, electronics and stuff can be a lot harder to fix than your normal average everyday stuff. All right. Now to get this off here, we'll zoom in again. I think I only have to take these ends off. The other ones are actually the connection, so be helpful to have more hands. Okay, it is hot enough to melt. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, we're gonna 
Put that there. Hmm. And it is not going through the board, so it is just surface soldered. I can't, it's moved it out of the way so you can't see. I don't want to melt the board though. Get a little screwdriver. Push this over there. Jam that in there. So I can put a little tension here when the solder melts. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. Hard to say. So we'll do the other side. Need a couple extra hands. Anyone help? Anyone? Well, if you can't help me, then I guess I have to help myself. Got one of these little doodles that'll hold electronics for you. Not the best ones, because I'm sure these can, these clamps can damage electronics. I know they make them now. They've got the soft grips and stuff. That make do with what you got. Not a lot of real estate here on this device. They're trying to keep it away from any parts that I can, of course. There we go. Let's see what happens here. Let's see. Something bent, but I don't know if it should have. Oh uh, yeah, see? The whole thing was bending, which I didn't want to do. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to try to remove the power switch, melt the solder, lift it up, then hopefully get it apart and see what's wrong. Will I be able to get it back on there? I have no idea. But, you know, they say go big or go home.
Okay, I got that one up. I think the other one may not have reconnected, but we'll try it just to make sure. Okay, got that up. So, we're, there we go, we got the two sides off. So now we got to get the front off, which, I don't know. We will see. So we'll use a pair of needle nose to grip. Right, there we go. We got the four wires. And we've got four pads and two grounds, so hey, guess we did what we were supposed to do. Doesn't look like I left any wires on there. That's good. Now, hopefully, that was the problem. Let's take a look at this, this switch here. So, we need to take this apart or buy a new one, which we may be getting the new one because these are not going to be easy. <laughs> but I'll try to take it apart, see what we can accomplish. It looks like this side here just folds over and is part of the cover. So let's get the little needle nose. Focus. There we go. And we'll give this a tug and see if this will. Yeah, there we go. I'm just bend this out a little bit. Oop. Didn't break. Just bending it out. Let's turn this around. Bend out the other side. And there we go. It's open. So, let's see what's inside. a little dirty. Oof. There's corrosion. There's some serious corrosion on everything that's touching in there that should not be black. So let's get a little poker and see if we can yeah, that looks like it'll scrape off. Actually, let's use a Q-tip with some alcohol first. See if we can get the large amounts of it off. Because a lot of this is skin flakes that get down in there. Could be just electronic crap. Just years of use. I don't know what year these were made. Let's see, up uh, 1997 it says, so 23 years of, well, <laughs> it, hasn't been, it hasn't worked for a while, so how many of her years before it gave up and quit working? So let's give it a little IPA first, and now I'm just giving it scraping a little with the tip of this. to get that off. Make it a little shinier. So, looks pretty good. Let's do some uh, checking on this switch. Yeah, let's take a look at this first. And this is the actual switching part itself. And it is just about all black also. And lost my pointy thing. There we go.
Oops, sorry. <laughs> Still doesn't feel good. It's way looser than I would think it should be. Maybe this is supposed to bend. It looks like it's kind of got a bend in the middle. Maybe this kind of pushes on that switch to keep it taut. Maybe these should be bent out more even. I'm sure over the years they have push them up under there just a little bit a little nudge I'm sure I could probably buy one of these switches on eBay let's give it a little bend in the middle She so doesn't feel too bad. Not bad at all. At least is not wiggling. Let's check some continuity here. Oh my. If you could see all that, what I was doing, but hopefully not important, I guess. So, we should get oops, something. Hey, look at that. We have continuity between the switch. And as over here, we should have no continuity. Yep. Nice. Turn that off. I knew I hadn't spilled anything on this, so that's a good thing. And I knew it had to be something probably mechanical, unless a piece went bad, which that can happen. Parts can go bad. Capacitors. Capacitors can go bad. That happens. Especially these older things, the capacitors go bad. It's pretty obvious though when they go bad because they usually bulge at the top or they have leaked out some of the uh, the fluid gel in there. Now the big part. Can we get this back on? I'm not really good at soldering these tiny little things but I've watched a lot of videos from soldering masters who have much better equipment than me, so it means absolutely nothing. So the first point is kind of line, lining this up back where it was. And then We're going to start on the side here and put the solder tip on there. So let's uh, really need to have this held on. So I'm going to use my little grabber here. Side first. So put that on there. You can see that the these pins are all lined up. The ground points are lined up. Oops, can you see? Yeah. Pins are lined up. Grounds lined up. I think we're good to go. Let's see if I can zoom in anymore to help you see. Anything? There we go. As good as it's going to get. And if I were doing this properly, I would have my 
sponge out here, unfortunately. I don't know where it's at. Should be a quick job anyway, so let's just do it. So we're going to put a little solder on the tip here. Not over the electronics. A little smoke. Yes, I shouldn't breathe it, I know. That this should be easy because okay. Verify that. Let's turn the iron off. Got the Trade the iron here. That. Remember, I'm a professional with this. Don't try what I do at home. Let's see, continuity, good, new continuity, ground, ground, new ground on the other pins, that's good, we got the, putting it on the, I guess I can zoom out a little so you can see, so, touching it on the negative, we got continuity there. No continuity on these four pins. Put it on the positive. We have continuity there. Not on the four pins except that one which we know is live. Kick this over. We have continuity there. Oh, no continuity there. Hmm. That's just a little disturbing because I thought those were the. Oh, there we go. Phew. There we go. We have continuity where it should be, I believe. Let's put the batteries in and see what happens. If this acts up, I will probably replace that switch because I can't imagine they're expensive. But with eBay, you never know. So we have the back part. Lay it down. Turn it over. Don't need the battery case for the cover. And let's see. <gasps> we have a light. I believe that's the volume. Made a noise. I don't know if it's the right noise. <laughs> But we have power, that's what's important.